Okay, I'm gonna play, right? Is this gonna yes. be too loud? Or? Yeah, you're good. And that part like gave me anxiety for so long. Wolf, you're a cruel boss. Dude, it's... <laughs> These crowds have been so crazy on this tour. It's a level that we have not uh, expected. Just two years ago, we were playing for like 300 people. Yeah. And now it's like, this is the first tour where we've played for over a thousand people. From Mammoth's inception, it's been sort of my artistic exploration and trying to see if, hey, since I can play everything, let's see if I can do it. You yeah. Know? This has been a really eye-opening, uh, crazy tour. Yeah. Hey, I'm Wolf Van Halen. I'm Garrett Whitlock. Welcome to the Mammoth 2 tour. I'm stoked uh, to be here with Wolf and Garrett from Mammoth WVH. What's up? And, uh, this is cool because, Garrett, you're the drummer in Mammoth, but Wolf, you play drums on all the records. Yeah. And I was just saying out there earlier, when you're reading the credits, it's almost something you gloss over where it's like drums, guitars, vocals, bass, Wolfgang Van Halen. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> so we got the set list for the Seattle show. Can you just walk us through how you plan this? Is this a lot of new material? Good mix of both uh, records? I think um, the way I had it, is I split it up, it's 16 songs, and eight and eight, Mammoth One, Mammoth Two. We wanted to move stuff around, um, but as we kept playing the sets, it was like, this flows too well hmm. to mix it up. I know we, we were opening with Right earlier uh, in the tour, and then we flipped it around because Mammoth just felt so good to open with, plus yeah. it's a really great <laughs> vocal warm up for me. Doing Right vocally, is such a bitch. Like a pastime is a bitch. Optimist is a bitch. Waiting is a bitch. Take a bow. And it's, it's just like, maybe I just write things that are difficult for me to do, I guess. Cruel torture. Yeah, yeah. But I think it, the whole point of it, it flows really well in terms of like letting my voice warm up. Mm. And then we do the whole, you know, classic rock, walk off stage, <laughs> pretend like you're not gonna come back and then come yeah, back two seconds bad. later. And I make a point to say that's, it's, it's stupid that <laughs> we do that. Why do we do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the last two songs, uh, Another Celebration and Don't Back Down, is this great sort of one-two punch um, that the crowd seem to uh, really dig. I think most people are used to seeing you on the covers of the guitar magazines and stuff, but you did record drums. Yeah, on yeah. the albums. So what was that like? I started on drums when I was nine, so it's always been the, the instrument I've been uh, most comfortable on. Yeah. So uh, it's, I, I wish I had the opportunity to play drums more. Now I feel like I only ever play drums when we're recording. So. Yeah, you got this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I joke with him all the time. I'm like, thank God you can't sing, play guitar, and drums at the same time. Yeah, exactly. I'll be out of a job. I haven't really played drums since we recorded the album. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone knows we pulled you from uh, lead vocals and guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the studio, you recorded this at 5150, which is, I guess, on your childhood home's property. Yeah. What kind of gear were you using? Were you using a bunch of stuff that was in there or like your uncle's gear or anything? My like uncle that? let me raid storage and use like nine of his snares. Oh, I can't nice. remember the exact ones. I know uh, uh, my producer Elvis was like, you yeah, know, try this one for this song, try this one for this song. Yeah. But mostly I used like Ludwig Vistalite green sparkle nice. uh, kit that they made. It's in the uh, Don't Back Down video. <laughs> Waiting on you guys. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I'm so stoked that we finally got to use it on an album. Nice. So, Garrett, you're obviously playing all the parts that Wolf recorded in the no. studio. What's that like um, playing for the guy who wrote the parts? Is that intimidating? Do you have freedom to change it up live? There yeah. are little liberties I'll take, but I really do feel I owe it to him and the music to, to yeah. really the pocket and the groove that's there. To... It's a mixed bag. There's equal parts intimidation. If you get off 
Yeah, you're for a done. second. <laughs> it's like you just have to jump back on a train. So <laughs> there's equal parts just wanting to uh, execute and, and play them as best as I can. And um, he's really, really cool about, you know, not not necessarily make it your own, but put your flair yeah. in there. Yeah, there's so much stuff that he ends up doing. I'm like, I should have done yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I try and stay as close to the source material and like when it comes to like certain fills, he hears things differently than I do. So yeah, there's there's times where I, I try and some <laughs> of the stuff he's doing, like the like the thing in right, it, it was just like I sat and it was just like this is wild. So yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's yeah. that's the thing that I did. I sat for a really long time <laughs> trying to figure out how he kind of alternates back and forth yeah. between the snare. So the first thing I heard in this was there's some kind of gnarly double bass stuff in here. Yeah. It sounds like there's some uh, some Meshuggah influence Definitely. in there. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody knows Bleed, which is just kind of that repeated. And uh, I just wanted to do something kind of similar in that vein. Yeah. And that's what became The double kick kind of gets introduced in the solo with the... Uh... And then it goes into the... Uh... Yeah, dude. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. And dude. that part like gave me anxiety for so long. Yeah, uh, I forgot about that turnaround in the middle. That's that's, that's kind of a bit so too. Gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Garrett, are you playing pretty much exactly? that part, or are you changing anything there? Yeah, I, uh, the intro fill into that kind of section. How he hears things and how I hear things, it's, I learn so much from him because he thinks so differently than I do. Yeah. But the flip side to that is, is sometimes how he hears things, <laughs> I literally, so I'll have to kind of like MacGyver it a yeah. little bit. Really, the, the big thing that was a, was a thing for me as a drummer was there's this fill in uh, Pull Me Under uh, nice. from, from Dream Theater. It was the thing that taught me that you can, in between like a regular sort of roll, yeah. you can keep going on the, you know, with your hands instead of going, you can go like, You said you started playing drums when you were nine. Obviously, you come from one of the most musical families out there. And was your your dad and your uncle teaching you? Were you listening to My records? My dad started on drums as well. Yeah. Um, and he he put like magazines on the table, mm -hmm. and he was like, "With this one, do this. And with this one, do that. And then do your foot the exact opposite of your left hand. Yeah. And if you do that, you're playing high with hell." And he showed me how to do that. And once he saw that I could like maintain doing that, he was like, Fuck yeah. 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 And then from there, uh, I just, uh, I listened to a lot of uh, Van Halen, Best of Volume One, yep. and Enema of the State. Nice. <laughs> I, I, those two albums were the only things I really listened to. And I was just trying to do everything I could hear on, on, on those, both those albums. That's a pretty good blueprint for uh, being a great drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw you playing bass in 2012 on mm -hmm. uh, a different kind of truth tour with Van Halen. Yeah. Playing, I guess, beside your uncle, Alex, were there any things that you picked up as a bass player or even as a drummer um, from being around someone like that who's, I mean, a legend in the drum world? Nothing specifically. I think it was just kind of uh, learning how to lock in, playing with the other musicians. I think uh, between locking in with Al and just jamming with him. And then also, you know, because my dad was bad at counting. So he'd come in early or come in late and Al and I would like swoop in and save him. 
Hmm. He'd have no idea. <laughs> so locking with Al, but at the same time being that safety net for Pop if he ended a solo early or yeah. went a little long or something like that. Everybody counts in their own way. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How does it end into the uh Let's jump to Optimist. I think it's the instrumental of the bridge section. Yeah. And you kind of have that double bass thing going on. Yeah, the annoying, the dumb thing about it is that in, in the space between the chorus and the, and the bridge, yeah. it's counting in seven. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's just kind of annoying to begin with. So I think to uh, make it not so complicated, I kind of mark the first and third counts of seven with a ride. Yeah. So the bass is going. Four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. That's yeah. how it gets into that. Is that something that, compared to the first record, like, I can't remember if you did much odd time on Mammoth One. Yeah, there were, there really wasn't, off the top of my head, nothing Epiphany too. was kind of odd time. Yeah, it's, I get in four, but just kind of a bit to do, because the verse for Epiphany, you really need to hone in, because it's, because it opens with the. So it kind of establishes that kick thing, but you have to do the open hi-hat by going. Which is, it's more difficult than it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually those like subtle details that yeah, are exactly. a trip to play. And then in the bridge, you're hitting the ups, the opposites with the hi-hat, so it's. Uh, So just like little subtle variations yeah. on that regular beat, you know. Nice. And that almost catches you off guard. Like you get to the bridge. I guess the rest of the song up to that point is pretty pretty straight yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's been pretty. And straight. then you get there and you're like, whoa. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> yeah. No. The um. So I have the click going right now and my ears going. Yeah. But when I spin it around, <laughs> the hi hat is gonna go in the gap. Yeah in between the clicks. So I really wish you could hear the click as I play this, but. <laughs> it's a really, really fun song to play, but it's one of those things, like if you, if you get off yeah, you're for done. a second, <laughs> it's like you just have to jump back on a train, so <laughs> yeah. Garrett Whitlock. Garrett, how did you end up joining Wolf? Uh, what's the story there? Um, well, Wolf and I had played together previously uh, in Mark Tremonti's uh, solo band, Tremonti, mm -hmm. but I've known him since 2009. Nine? And we always just kind of hit it off. Drummers, we always just kind of get along, like, yeah. you know? Uh, and uh, when Mammoth kind of started to get to the point where it would turn into a touring entity. He approached and said, hey, I'm going to audition some people. And I was just like, dude, totally. Yeah. Like, you know. And then I didn't at all. Like, I knew, <laughs> like, it was like, Garrett's the guy. I'm your dude, man. So it was yeah. cool. You walk, we walked into the audition room and it's just like, oh, I know you. I know you. Yeah. So it was just this like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Playing with Wolf is, he never once was just like, 
play what's there. I don't want him to like, be like, I have to do this perfectly yeah. the way it's on the record. It's like, no, be yourself. I love seeing what he's able to do with how he puts himself into the parts. I think that's yeah. really important. With all the, you know, with the bass and, and, and all the guitars, you know, with the guys in the band, I think it's really important that they shine through the part more yeah. than trying to like perfectly play everything the way it is on the record. You don't even know the solo. Now I have to play it. You fire. No. Take a bow. Yeah. There's some stuff near the in the bridge and also in the outro that are a bit of a trip. Yeah, for some reason I like to write things that don't start on the one. It's like always on the and. Yeah. And that's very much that riff of take a bow because it's one, two, three, four, one. Da 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 It's always on the up. And then for the right before the solo, it kind of goes into a, a fill that falls into that. So it's like. That's the other funny thing where it's like the top of the, the verse or of each bar has a kickless crash. Yeah. So it's one, two, three, four. <laughs> It's like cool. kind of kind of wacky, yeah. but uh, that's at the box. The ending of that one. Oh, on the uh, yeah, it's another cool way he kind of really utilizes halftime in the stack. Yeah, something like that. I have to adapt it some way to where rhythmically it's still. Well, I yeah. think it's also a funny thing because like we lead differently. Like he's left-handed. Yeah. So okay. he, yeah. he leads like rolls and fills in a different way than yeah, I do. So he's like, so it's like I can show him how how I do things, mm -hmm. but that's not going to be the way he does it. So it's, yeah, I can only help him halfway. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so simple. Just starting with your opposite hand. Yeah. It's just like oh, checks okay. out. All right. <laughs> Let's jump to the encore, another celebration, it's the end of the yeah. world. John is the guitar player who starts the song, and sometimes yeah. he'll just look at Garrett and just make Garrett go. For like two minutes too long. Yeah. Like, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> the fill into the beginning is just a simple. That, that, that song is very much about the push. One of my little favorite uh, blink and you'll miss it moments is in the second verse. Mm -hmm. There's these like sort of kick flams where it it, it starts, it just kind of gets more and more complicated. It does, it yeah. eventually does a little like uh, triplet sort of thing. I mean, there's the thrashy bridge, I guess, but it's very much just a... I think, I think during recording, I just made an effort to hit, make sure every single <laughs> symbol was moving yeah. <laughs> by the second half, because it like builds up to... Uh... I love that fill that you do there. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, that's still, that's all the pushes for the solo. It's just on every one and. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two. Yeah, so every four and, I guess, is the. Yeah. <laughs> It really is like one of those songs where it's just like one of those feel good, this rock and roll, just huge parts yeah. where you're just swinging for the fences. There's one thing I, I, I play on guitar that I wish I had done on the drums, 
uh, near the end during the halftime part where it's da 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 I wish I'd done dig it it dig it it on the second time. So like. Yeah. And it's, it's got the big <laughs> rock ending too. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you on the road. 